retiring at 40 and spending your time exactly as you want to, not having to worry about money whatsoever. It only takes a plan and some time. It sounds perfect, right? Well, some people just don't want you to be happy. What's up everyone, my name is Joris and welcome back to The Money Network. As you know, I created this channel to spread information and to spread tips about personal finance, about money, about investing, about real estate and so much more. In most social circles, money is taboo, but I'm here to break that taboo and be very, very open about money. Today, more and more people are getting interested in money and how to manage their own finances. This particular interest eventually resulted in the FIRE movement, which stands for Financially Independent Retire Early movement. In this video, we will look at the concept itself, what it is and why people choose to follow it and if it is something for you. We'll get to it right after you hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and after you subscribe to the Money Network. At the moment, we have 1,600 members in the network. So it's time to crack those numbers up. The FIRE movement, the Financial Independent Retire Early movement is a financial movement which gained popularity right after the major financial crisis of 2008 and is gaining a lot more fans in recent decades due to social media. In essence, its followers try to live as frugal as possible in order to save as much as possible and then invest that money for their future. The ultimate goal is to retire as soon as possible. But is that really it? A lot of critics are judging the whole movement as is, saying the followers just don't want to work, they are lazy, they cannot handle money, they are irresponsible investors and so on. They claim the FIRE movement followers are chucking their whole life savings and betting it on one financial product like cryptocurrency or something very, very volatile to go big or go home and retire at the age of 30 or 40. Well, well, we'll address a lot of these critics later in this video, but let's first look at what FIRE really is. So FIRE is basically trying to reduce your financial risk in your life. You are essentially trying to set up financial safety nets so you don't get into trouble later in life. This financial risk can be lowered by being very aware of your personal cash flow. In essence, the less you spend, the less risk you are taking. By spending less, you are reducing your upkeep costs, your reoccurring costs and possible credit. Less money spent means more money saved. The more money you save, the better you can prevent the financial problems later in your life. For example, by choosing to rent real estate instead of buying it, you are effectively cutting down on upkeep costs and other running costs that the real estate brings. Of course, renting versus buying is another discussion, but we're looking here at costs every month. The same goes for renting a car versus buying a car. The upkeep costs can be a lot lower. But that's the theory and it works for a lot of people. You have to spend less, you have to save and invest more. Easy. But that's basically being frugal and it has been around for ages. The FIRE movement now takes that theory one step further. The FIRE fans are trying to spend less, save more and invest more, but they also try to calculate their annual spending by budgeting current spending, but also forecasting future spending. They do the same calculations for their savings and their investments. As you know, money saved or invested grows at a certain percentage every year. An average return, so to say an average return that can be used for forecasting. While savings accounts pose little to no risk and they have a very little low return like 0.11% here in Belgium, investments on the other hand can have a bigger return. Depending on the sort of investment, returns of 3, 5, 7 or 9% can be possible before inflation and costs. The FIRE fans then calculate the projected return of their investments. And once those projected returns of their investments surpasses their projected costs, their projected expenses, they become financially independent, the FI part of FIRE. At this point, the return on their investments will cover all of their expenses. They will be paying for all of their expenses. And if they can, if they want to stop working, they can live off of the returns of their investments. And that second part, that is the 
RE part of FIRE, the retire early part. But let's be honest, FIRE is not about retiring early. The RE part is just marketing and has a nice ring to it. FIRE is all about financially independence, not having to worry about future payments, having ample money on savings accounts to go on a holiday whenever you choose. FIRE is about independence. Being independent of your next paycheck. I'm sure some people will stop working from the moment they can, but I have not met many. Most people I've spoken to are just like me. They try to implement safety nets, but they still try to continue to work. However, there is one major change in that work. Once this financial safety net is reached, priorities will shift. People who don't have to worry about money to pay off their living costs are free to do whatever they want with their working time. I have seen so many people resigning from their work the moment they reach financial independence just to start working somewhere else. Or they start a startup. Others join a good cause. Very few actually stop working altogether. And most of them limit the work to things they really love or where they are passionate about. In short, FIRE is about making sure in the future you will be able to do whatever you want without having too much of financial problems or financial worries. So how can anyone really have criticism on this idea? Well, there are several critics on the movement and some of them pose very good arguments. So let's look at some of them now and try to give a good answer to all of them. So these are my personal findings. So if you don't agree, be sure to leave a comment and let's get some conversations started. I'm always happy to read and learn about new insights and start new discussions from, with different points of view. Fire movement fans are lazy and do not want to work. They want to retire as soon as possible and not contribute to society at all. Well, we touched this point already earlier. I know very few people who actually completely retire after reaching fire. As for the lazy part, I think this is completely uncalled for. The idea of fire is to live off of as little money as possible and save as much money as possible. This requires a lot of planning and it takes a lot of work to set it up in the first place. Limiting your expenses is finite because some costs cannot be cut. But on the other hand, earning more is basically infinite. Taking up another part-time job to earn more, set up different income streams, all contribute to society and take a lot more work. At the moment I work full-time, I have a side business in real estate rental, I have this financial educational business, I do consulting, link in the description down below by the way, and I work in a bar from time to time. And sometimes I even do some odd jobs here and there when I can. I know a lot of people in my situation, they work six to seven days a week. We enjoy it and we definitely enjoy the extra money to save up for a rainy day. I would not call that lazy, but I would rather call it motivated for the bigger picture. The fire community sacrifices a lot of fun by being frugal. I would strongly disagree with this point. It's all about personal choices. While financial experts often advise you to save 5 to 10% of your income, I am adamant that it will not be enough for your retirement. You need to save more. 20% or even more is more like it. Personally, I save over 60% of my income and in some months I even surpass 80%. And I do not give up any of my past times. I don't start spending less. I just spend differently. I find alternatives. Instead of renting on your own, you could house hack. Instead of buying brands, you could buy the non-brands. Instead of going out for dinner, you can learn how to cook. Instead of going by car everywhere, you can use your bike and be more healthy. Options are endless. It's more of a lifestyle change. I have never owned a car. I go by bike to work. And even when I really need a car, I can just lend or rent one. The cost will be a lot lower than when I had one and I have to pay the upkeep costs. It's all about priorities. I'm not saying you should stop going to restaurants if you like it, if you love it. Then don't stop doing it. But, but be aware of the costs it brings. The biggest problem I see is when people start to earn more, they will also start to spend more. This is called the lifestyle creep. The more you make, the more money you spend. 
and why do you all of a sudden need all those extra stuff was yesterday a sacrifice where you're living on too little money where you're living miserably probably not so rethink that one bear markets and recessions will bankrupt you markets go up and down even for longer periods of time as a fire rule we look at the four percent withdrawal rate which has evidence that it will surpass all movements in the market for a very long time but if you are afraid that it would not cut it then use a more safer three percent or two percent withdrawal rule it's easy just factor in your safety net the fire movement encourages reckless behavior well, this is a big criticism and I can see where it comes from, especially with all the so-called internet finance gurus we encounter on a daily basis that, that sell us courses, that tell us to, do, to invest in this thing and be very risky. People on social media with big expensive cars saying how you should invest your money in the next cryptocurrency or in the next blockchain idea because apparently they made a lot of money by doing so and now... They are giving their information to help you. These are obvious scams. Why would they even tell you? But there's a lot of people that fall for it. But this is not the FIRE movement. The FIRE movement is all about steady and long-term growth. So be sure to distinguish between these two and make good financial decisions. Getting to your goal will take time and it will take work, but it's definitely reachable with a plan. So ignore these internet gurus that try to sell you some course or try to sell you the next big thing. But take your time, do the research yourself, surround you by people that are interested and know what they are doing. It won't be there tomorrow, it won't be there day after tomorrow, but by following a plan, you will succeed. So basically it's spend less, save more and diversify your investments. Build a passive income and most of all, Educate yourself about personal finance and investing. Find a good network and talk about money. Get rid of the finance taboo. Only people without kids can achieve fire. Only married couples can achieve fire. Only singles can achieve fire. Well, three criticisms I have seen a lot lately and all of them are wrong. Yes, raising a child is supposed to be very expensive. Gesinsbond did a study in 2018 to calculate the cost of a child up to their 25th birthday. They ended up with a minimum cost of 123,000 euros, excluding babysitting, education and medical costs. That is a big cost, but a kid is not an expense. A kid is an investment, giving you the happiness and fulfillment. So, while it is a big decision, a big financial decision, but you can still budget your children in your FIRE journey. The other way around is possible as well, being alone or being in a couple without children. Not having to budget for another generation will obviously make your journey easier. But it all boils down to your own motivation. It's not because you are single you will reach FIRE easily. You'll, have, you'll still have to plan and work for it. Just like it's not a given that a couple will reach fire. If one spouse is spending a lot while the other one tries to save, you will never really get there. You really need to be on the same page on that one. Decisions have to be made together. Only people who earn a lot can reach fire. Well, this is untrue because everyone can really reach fire depending on their savings rate. It might take a longer time for some, because someone who earns 20,000 euros per year won't be able to save 50% of their income, while someone who earns 100,000 euros a year, they will be able to do so. I've made a video in the past about a janitor who earned very little, he worked two part-time jobs, and he still managed to save up two million dollars. Only privileged people can achieve fire. For this critic, I have a very short question. Why? Because anyone can achieve FIRE, all it takes dedication and time. You need a plan, you need to make your plan and you need to follow your plan. It takes dedication. You can't be a naysayer and saying that you will never reach financial freedom if you keep spending more than you make every month. If you want to learn how to swim, you will have to get wet. You will have to do your best and try. It won't work from the first time, but eventually you'll get swimming. Fire is retiring early and sitting on a beach from age 30 on. 
No, it's not. For some people, that might be the goal, but I'm fairly sure that it's not the majority. The retire early is a marketing trick. It sells the idea better. It makes it more popular. For me, financial freedom is the most important part. Being able to follow your dreams and your passions without having to worry about money, about finances in the future. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. I want to create a perfect life for myself away from the financial rat race. And I want to share this information with you, which I'm doing right now. Once you don't have to work to live, you can start living to work. You can do whatever you want and you can then pursue what you really, really want in life. It will take time, but it is definitely worth it. So let me know what you think. What's your stance on fire? Let me know in the comments below and let's get a conversation started. I'm very, very interested in what you have to say. I want to get some discussions with you. So please write something down. I will see you next time.